If you have your Bibles, open it to Luke 137. This year, my Christmas specials have been on Wednesday, and they've all come from Luke 1, 26 through 38. As a powerful passage out of Luke, Luke 1 and 2, where Luke really, as a physician, uh, just has incitive ideas about the miraculous virgin motherhood of Mary. And it's well worth a read, and he's technical. Luke is a technical writer in the Greek language. And so you really have to pay attention to everything in the Greek language in the book of Luke on the Christmas story. But it's a magnificent writing that Luke did on, ver in fact, he's the only one that really explains it. And I love the fact that he was a, a medical uh, doctor. Uh, so it, but look at verse 30, 37. Many of you are familiar with this Christmas story uh, on the, the virgin motherhood of Mary. And I've gone in great lengths on it on the Wednesday studies, but Gabriel, who is the messianic teacher sent from heaven, he is the, he is the one that <clears throat> always brings clarity on messianic teachings of, of the word of God. He's been sent in the sixth month, in verse 26, he's been sent in the sixth month to, uh, <clears throat> of Elizabeth's pregnancy uh, to uh, the city of Nazareth of Galilee uh, to Mary, who is engaged to Joseph, as we're told. And he, it, he comes in and explains to her that uh, she's been selected by God, chosen by God, uh, to be uh, the messianic mother, the mother of Christ. <clears throat> uh, she understands in the way he delivered his salutation that it was an immediate thing <clears throat> because she re immediately responded with a question, how can this be when he says, you're going to become the mother of Messiah? She says, how can this be since I'm a virgin? <clears throat> and he goes into explanation, wonderful detailed explanation of that in verse 35, 36, and 37, and then her response in 38. And I've covered this in great detail because uh, Luke is such a detailed writer and, and is the major source of really understanding the miraculous conception of the virgin motherhood of Mary. He is the primary teacher on it. Well, in verse 37... Um, when he gets through explaining to her in verse 35, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the holy offspring shall be called the Son of God. Uh, and behold, and he gives an explanation on the miracle side. The miracle side. In verse 36, he gives her an, an example on the miracle side of what, God is going to do with Mary, he has done with Elizabeth in another way, but a miracle. He says in verse 36, Behold, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age. That's way beyond menopause. And she who was called barren is now in her six months of pregnancy. Now watch, what he, now watch what he tells Mary, because this is my study today. It's a study you need to walk away with here from. Listen to what he says to her. He says, for nothing will be impossible with God. Nothing will be impossible with God. Now, I want you to hold your place, and before I have a word of prayer with you, I want you to go with me to Romans Oh, let's go to Romans. We're, we're, you know, we're going to walk our way to the right. We're going to go through Acts, and we're going to go into Romans. And we're going to go to the fourth chapter. And listen, maybe this year you're in need of a miracle. And God is still in the miracle business. 
The character of God has not changed. His character doesn't change with the wind. It doesn't change with the culture. Either the culture changes with his character or it doesn't, it doesn't do well. I want you to look at 417. When he's talking about Abraham and Sarah would be very similar to Zechariah and Elizabeth. He writes, as it is written, a father of many nations, I have made you. That's going to Abrahamic covenant of Genesis 12 through 15. In the sight of him whom you believed, even God. Now watch this. Watch this now. Even God who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. In the Hebrew, they have a word for that. They have one, one Hebrew word that describes that whole last phrase. It's called bara, B-A-R-A. Bara, many of you that have gone through Genesis with me know that. Bara, to, God can call into existence. Bara means that God can call into existence that which does not exist. That's a miracle, isn't it? Sometimes a miracle is creating something that does not exist, and sometimes is taking something that does exist that's dead and bring it back to life. He did it with, the, with Sarah and Abraham. They were sexually dead and brought that back to life. Uh, he did it with Elizabeth and Zechariah, the similar miracle. And now he's going to do a miracle that's outside of that. He's going to really create something out of, out of, I can't say nothing because it's going to be in coexistence, but what he's going to do with Mary's, one half of Mary's egg is phenomenal. And we'll talk about that. I'll talk about it uh, somewhat today. And again, I'll close my Christmas series on Wednesday. You don't want to miss my closing uh, remarks on that. Let me have a word of prayer and, and let's talk about this phrase, for nothing will be impossible with God. Nothing will be impossible. And listen, in human terms, we would call if it, if that which is impossible becomes possible, it's a miracle. And let me tell you, God's still doing miracles. Sometimes they're spectacular and sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're not spectacular, but they're a miracle nevertheless. And you need to be aware of that. And you're, sometimes your situation in life can be such that it, you're in the impossible. From a human mind and a human standpoint, you're in the impossible. But listen, don't miss this phrase. What, what, what's the word? Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. That's a double negative to bring hope to your heart. Nothing's impossible with God. All things are possible with God. Nothing's impossible with God. I mean, that should hold you to the, to the last breath, shouldn't it? I mean, how encouraging is that idea that nothing's impossible with God? That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's pray. Remember, the Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people, for spiritual living. Can't learn it nor live it in carnality. Evidence of carnality is personal sin. Could be mental attitude sins. Could be sins of the tongue or overt sins. These need to be confessed according to 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness takes the believer to the cross of Christ, not this time for salvation, but for sanctification. When you confess your sin, he moves you out of carnality into spirituality, which is what sanctification is all about. That's why it's so important to your life. Sanctification is where the power of the Holy Spirit in this dispensation works mightily in the life of a believer. Our Heavenly Father, we thankful. For these that have come our way today by the automobile and the internet, I pray the Holy Spirit would challenge us. 
all scripture is profitable. May it be profitable today, Father, to correct us and bring us to reproof and to train us, to equip us for the work of the Lord. For we've made our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Gabriel, Gabriel, the top teacher on Messiah, has been sent to Mary before we meet Mary in Luke 1 and 2, where her life has changed forever. Mary was just a nobody from nowhere. Just a nobody from nowhere. And I meet a lot of people that feel that way. And listen, you're a candidate for God. You're a wonderful candidate for God because God is looking for the nobody, nowhere to make you somebody in the wonderful plan of God. And when you believe that Christ died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead the third day, he will bring you into his identity with Christ. And when you become identified with Christ, if anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You are somebody, and you will always be that somebody because you're identified with the Son of God. And everything that he is, you, you have become positionally. He's a son, you're a son. He's a priest, you're a priest. He's an heir, you're an heir. He's eternal life, you're eternal life. And the list just goes on. In salvation, everybody is somebody. And is somebody very important to God. And he's going to, he's going to bring Mary out of the shadow of her spiritual growth a comfort place apparently where Mary was comfortable just being who she was and not being a splash. She's not going to be the home, home, homecoming queen and not going to be the top athlete or anything like that. She's just Mary. Just Mary from a little town in Galilee called Nazareth. How did the Jews feel about Nazareth? Nothing good can come out of it. <laughs> it was, uh, people lived there with nobody from nowhere. But God, God in his marvelous grace, cares deeply about every person in Christ. Your identity in Christ makes you somebody. It will make you somebody. It will make you somebody on earth and will make you somebody in heaven, somebody special to the heart of God. Don't let the world tell you that you're a nobody from nowhere. Because if you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, you are somebody. And God is very much aware of your life and what he, what he desires from it is phenomenal. And listen, he's willing to perform mir many miracles to bring you out into the public arena where you can share your life and your faith with other people. That's a marvelous idea. That's a marvelous idea. I'm, I'm amazed at myself uh, be, being one of those guys that God would bring me out and teach other people and be part of a public arena. That's pretty amazing to me. It's not because I certainly chose to be that person. It's because I was chosen to be that person. And I understand that. And I understand it's not about me. It's about it's about the Lord in me that makes me of any significance important. Well, he, he informs Mary that she's going to be the mother of Christ. And she, she struggles with that. She's going to fulfill Isaiah 7.14. She struggles with that because she's a virgin. And she mentions that three times. Uh, or it's discussed three times in this passage. Three times it's discussed. Um, a lot of times we miss simple words like the word behold. I did a whole study on it the other day, the word behold. What you don't realize is the dynamics of that little word behold because it means that you're supposed to pay special attention, put all, 
don't miss a word I've got to say to you. The word behold says it means keep your ears tuned because you're on the right channel and you're on the right frequency to really learn something really important. When that word is said either by God to you or you to God, it's a really huge statement. It doesn't look like much in the English, but it's a powerful idea in the Greek language. It's Aiden. It's in the imperative mood. It's a pretty powerful idea. It's used three times. I just bring that to your attention because last Wednesday I did a study on it. I want to talk about three things today before we go home on this Christmas holiday special. And it's a message that brings Mary hope because she's wondering, how is this going to be? How am I going to be the mother and I'm a virgin? And how is that going to take place? How is that going to take place? And so we have the whole concept, no matter what circumstances of life, and this is what I want you to walk away with, I wrote in my introduction to you, no matter what the circumstances in your life are there challenging you today, no matter what the circumstances in your life that are challenging you, Gabriel has an answer for you. Nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible with God. It's a marvelous idea. For nothing will be impossible with God. And I gave you a, a key verse. I gave you, now listen to me. You should have wrote it somewhere on your paper, Romans 4.17. That's a powerful idea. He can call into existence that which is, does, it does not exist. He can, that's a powerful idea. Now, point number one. Gabriel, the teaching angel, taught Mary the key doctrinal point of the doctrine of the virgin motherhood of Christ in verse 37. He said, for nothing will be impossible with God. The word for is unique. Sometimes it's gar, G-A-R, and it's a conjunction, just a typical conjunction. This is not the word. This is the word hote, H-O-T-I. It is a conjunction, but it's a, it's plus the ablative, it's called, it's called causal. It's a causal ablative. It should, it carries the concept of because. Now, what he's done, he's explained to her how, as a virgin, she's going to give birth to Christ. As a virgin, as a virgin. And so the whole day is connected with verse 35, 36. 35, 36, that's connected. Hote is connected. It's a connective link because of how is this going to be possible in 34? So he goes and explains 35, which is a dynamic uh, idea of the virgin conception. And then he says, because nothing, to answer a question, because nothing will be impossible with God. Notice the double negative. You have ook plus the A on the front of the word, A-D-U-N-A-T-E-O. That word A on the front is a negative. That's a double negative in the Greek language. That's the reason the, the ook is translated nothing and the other word impossible. It's a double negative for emphasis. It's a double negative for emphasis. How Mary is saying, how can this possibly happen? There is no reasoning. There is no way I can reason this out in my mind. Look at verse 35. He understands that. When he explains it, he says to her, the spirit, of this, he answers, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, and for that reason, for that reason, for that reason. You see, she's trying to figure in her mind because it doesn't make any sense to her. Because God is going to call into existence something that does not exist. 
God is going to bara. And she goes like, well, this don't make any sense. It doesn't. There is no any sense in my mind on this. So he gave her a clue for this reason. For this reason. In verse 35. For this reason, the holy offspring shall be called the son of God. Then he explains to her, her reasoning. There is no reasoning. It's a miracle. He says, for nothing, he explains Elizabeth's deal, and then he says, for nothing will be impossible with God. I mean, how do you figure it out? You don't. There's just some things you have to trust and believe, and God brings it to pass. God can do what is impossible, but it'll always be according to his word. See, he lays out the word and explains the word is your answer to your reasoning. For this reasoning. And then he gives, tells her, for nothing's impossible with God. God is El Shaddai. God is God Almighty. You must remember this stuff. You must remember this stuff. It's a very powerful idea. It's a very powerful, powerful idea. All things are possible when they're according to the word of God. Look at, look at how Mary responds in verse 38. Mary says, behold, the bond slave of the Lord, be it done to me. Now watch this. Be done to me according to your word. See, he, in verse 37, nothing will be impossible with God. And she says, I'm in. I believe that. I believe God is El Shaddai. I believe he's God Almighty. She says, behold, she uses that word back to him. Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, be it done to me according to your word. Now, I explained to you in the past, see that word, word? That's not Lagos. That's not Lagos. That's Rima with a definite article. Hey, Rima. Rima is a category of, of the word. We call it categorical Bible doctrine. It's a specific doctrine of the word of God. And that's, that's the virgin motherhood that's explained to Mary of the Messiah, the virgin motherhood of the Messiah. <laughs> he didn't use logos. He used rima, R-H-E-M-A. That's very important. But the point he's making to hit her that I'm trying to make to you is that when you get in those places where it doesn't make any sense, but the word of God has laid out some idea for you to believe, you're in for a miracle. You're in for a miracle. And miracles come because nothing's impossible with God. You know what's interesting? Say the word with God in that passage. That's para. Means in your association with God. That's para plus the association. That's para of association with God. Because nothing's impossible when you, are in a, when you are connected with God in a personal way. When you are personally connected with God, when you are personally connected with God, all things are possible. All th there is nothing impossible. All things are possible. Nothing's impossible, therefore all things are possible. The fulfillment of this promise given to Mary will come by completing the faith cycle in her life. Let me show you something. Now write this down. You got your pencil? There's one in the pew. Get a pencil. It's called class. The faith cycle, remember, goes clockwise. So here's what, here's what God wants her to hear. Here's, here, here's your lesson today. Here's what he wants her to hear. Write this out, out there. You know, you, we know what Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. What's the word of God he wants her to hear? Here, here it is. Luke 137. Put that out there, Luke 137. For nothing is impossible with God. 
That's the message. Is that not the message to her? Yeah, that's the message. But how, how can this possibly be? Well, this is how it's going to be. Nothing is impossible with God. Now, Nick, the other verse I want you to write up before I leave it is Matthew 17, 20. People, there are all kinds of sermons preached on that, and they're probably all good. It's about the mustard seed. Matthew 17, 20 is about the mustard seed. Faith of a mustard seed. Faith of a mustard seed. Let me show that to you. It's, it's close. 1720. Just to give you an idea. He's been... He's been with the disciples, casting out demons, and they're, they're not having much success at it. He said to them, the disciples came to Jesus 19 privately, saying, why couldn't we cast out these demons? He said to them, because of the littleness of your faith, for truly I say to you, remember that's a point of, a point of doctrine of interest, truly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you shall say to the mountain, move, move from here to there, and it shall move. Now watch. Here's the part I'm after. And nothing shall be impossible to you. See, the idea that Jesus is trying to tell them is that your faith must always have a reliable object. The object, whatever your faith is in, what it's in has got to be able to do what the promise was there connected to it. What was the promise? See, that's, that's, write this down. This is Romans 4.21. What, what God has promised, he's able to bring to fulfillment. He is able to perform. What he's promised, he can perform. That's Romans 4.21. See, it's in that same passage with Romans 4.17. See, faith comes by hearing. So he gives her, Mary, I'm going to tell you what it is, and then I want you, here's what I want you to hold on to. For nothing is impossible with God. You stay connected with God. You, you stay connected with God, Mary. Your relationship is all about God. And you're going to see God do miraculous things in your life. Specifically on this Rima, this specific doctrine of the virgin motherhood. Well, once Mary understands that and, and believes that, then that, that becomes her, her faith. What is her faith in? Her faith, listen to me, what is, the, what is the doctrine? Virgin motherhood of Mary. What is the doctrine that he's being taught? Virgin motherhood, right? 26 through 38. And so now she brings, brings that, that idea into her faith. She understands, okay, here's the bottom line. Nothing's impossible with God. And what it's about, Mary, virgin motherhood. Okay, I can believe this. I believe that God can do that without me having sexual relationships with Joseph. I believe that. I don't know how that's going to happen, <laughs> but I know nothing's impossible with God, right? Right? So listen, how this is really, this little phrase is going to be really important to her because she's going to become three months pregnant without having any sexual relationship with anybody, not even Joseph. And she's going to need this little phrase because there's going to be conflict arise in regard to this in her life. And when it does, she's got to believe that nothing's impossible with God. Because Mary is going to, this is going to happen to her, the miraculous conception is going to happen to her in Nazareth of Galilee, and she immediately is going to leave and go spend three months with Elizabeth to bring Elizabeth through, through her birth. And then she's going to return to back to Nazareth three months pregnant. 
And Joseph is going to be the first to meet her and think you've gained a little weight, Mary. What is this deal? What is this deal? The Holy Spirit is going to fertilize Mary's egg with the divine DNA. The 23 chromosomes of Mary's egg is going to be united, fertilized, with the 23 chromosomes of divine sperm. A divine DNA. And it's produce a hypostatic human being. 100% God and 100% man. And he has to be born of a virgin to qual be qualified in order to die on a cross. It has to come this way because he has to be born outside of Adam's sin to die for everybody in the slave market of Adam's sin. If he is not born this way of Luke 135, he will not qualify to be the Savior of the world. He has to be... 1 Peter 1.19, he has to be a lamb without blemish and spot. There could be no birth defects nor growth defects for a lamb to be offered for his blood for the sins of man. Christ, in fulfilling that shadow Christology, has to be born without, without Adam's sin. He has to be born outside the slave market of sin in order to redeem all of those that are inside the slave market. Of Adam's sin. All human beings are in the Adam's slave market of sin, Romans 5, 12 through 21. So when Mary comes back, three months pregnant, and Joseph comes to realize that Mary's pregnant, it hit the fan. Conflict. Conflict. You can read about it in Matthew, the first chapter, conflict. Joseph calls off the wedding, calls off the engagement, and considers that Mary has committed adultery. And being an honorable man, he decided that he should divorce her Privately. And Gabriel shows up while he was asleep, having come to a decision that he would go ahead and divorce Mary and be done with it. Gabriel shows up and tells him, you're absolutely 100% wrong. He explains how Mary got con conceived of the Holy Spirit and tells him not to divorce her, but to marry her. He woke up and did as the angel of the Lord told him. That's Matthew, the first chapter. What is Mary holding on to during this whole episode? What's Mary doing during this? Well, Joseph's going nuts over this thing, and you can understand his position. This is a miracle. Nothing's ever happened like this before, ever. This is way beyond Elizabeth and Zechariah or Abraham and Sarah. They just prove that God, God can do impossible things that he can take something that's dead and bring it back to life. He can do it in your life, too. So what is Mary holding on to during this time of great conflict in her life, this upheaval? She's holding on to that promise, isn't she? What's that promise? For nothing is impossible with God. If he's promised it to you, Romans 4.21 he will bring it to pass. 
And so Mary has six more months to go with this. But you see, what does she hold on in the application part? She, she has heard it, she has believed it, and she's holding on to it, isn't she? What is she holding on to? She's holding on to this promise. Nothing is impossible with God. And listen, it isn't. He sent Gabriel while Joseph was asleep and interrupted him and told him exactly what God told him to do. And when he woke up, he said, I'm going to do. I've had a visit from Gabriel, and I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And listen, you might think it's all over yet, but listen, the baby hasn't been born yet. And all of a sudden, there's, there's a Roman census. And she's forced in, in the very time uh, that she should be giving birth. She's, she's forced by the Roman census to leave Nazareth on a tough, hard journey to Bethlehem because the Romans have required it. But listen, God has required it. Micah 5, 2. The Messiah must be born in Bethlehem of Judah. Not just any Bethlehem. And she has to make that journey all the way down there, pregnant, ready to give birth to Christ. That's a tough trip. I don't know if I can make it, Joseph. Well, I think I can. Why? Because nothing's impossible with God. Because nothing's impossible with God. Then they get there. Now she goes like, I'm ready to deliver. And there's no, pl there's no place to go. There's no inn. There's no home. There is nothing available for her to have a baby. And so she, so she gives, she goes to the shepherd's uh, barn or stable or cave or however it is. There's no room at the end. She gives birth in a stable like the lambs of God. You know who these shepherds were at Bethlehem? They were the Messianic shepherds. They were the ones that had, they, they cared for the sheep that were offered. These were the elite shepherds of the elite lambs that were used for sacrifice. We're only about five miles out of Jerusalem or less. These shepherds are not just any old shepherds. What a wonderful part they have in this in Luke, the second chapter. I mean, that's the one my family reads every year at the Christmas story at our home. It's the story of the shepherds. It's a phenomenal story of the shepherds. And so there's more conflict. There's more, more conflict in her life. And what promise does she have? Does she have a promise to hold on to? Huh? See, that's what God wants to do in your life. He wants to give you promises for you to hold on to, these promises. And here's one for your life. Nothing's impossible with God. That what he's promised you, he will bring it to pass. And in between bring, bringing the promise to, per, per, to performance is this period in your life, nothing is impossible with God. Trust him. He is the, he, his character is what is behind the fulfillment of the promise of his word. So it's just a marvelous story. And listen, she really has that attitude when she says, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, be it done to me according to your word. What a wonderful attitude that she has. Here's the second thing. Every word of God is possible to be fulfilled because of the character of the essence of God. I laid the essence of God out there because it's a good reminder for us. You need to grab that second point well. In Genesis, the 18th chapter, in verse 14, when God tells, when the, God sends an angel to tell Abraham and Sarah that they're going to have a baby, he's 100 and she's 90. Sarah laughed. 
And God called her out. In fact, her baby was going to be named Isaac because of it. Laughter. He calls her out. In Genesis, the 18th chapter, verse 14, God says to Abraham, your wife just laughed at the word. He, she scoffed at the word that I gave. Listen to what he says. Listen to what he says. Is anything, now listen to me, this, I want you to get this. He says, is anything too difficult for God? See, everything they've told Abraham and Sarah is too difficult for Abraham and Sarah. In fact, it's impossible. Apart from God and a miracle. And if it takes that to, for God to fulfill his word in your life, that's, that's exactly what he'll do. For nothing is impossible in your relationship with God. What he tells you he will do, he will do. Don't ever doubt it. It's a marvelous idea. You should be, you should be writing some of this down. Uh, God is, is requiring Mary's faith in the character of God. God is requiring Mary's faith in the character of God to fulfill what he's promised. Romans 4.21. See, when you put Hebrews 11.1 1 with Hebrews 11.6, you have some dynamite ideas. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. That's on the hearing, believing side of the faith cycle. And the assurance of things not seen is on the application, completion side. And here's what your heart ought to hold to. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. If you think you're going to please him by works, no, you, you please him by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is the character of God and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him, that he will bring to fulfillment what he's promised. You should become a student of the word of God. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You see, in the faith cycle, it is at the completion side that pleases God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's in that completion side. It's not in the hearing, not in the believing, not in the application. All of those are necessary to get God where he can show you that he is God Almighty, that he is worthy of your praise, he is worthy of your worship, he is worthy. That's all he's showing, Mary. I am worthy. That's what he's showing, Joseph. I am worthy. That's what he's trying to show you. I am worthy of worship. Is he? Let me conclude. Mary's personal relationship, power with God, her power with God, for nothing is impossible with God in your relationship with God, your personal relationship. Mary's personal relationship with God regarding her virgin motherhood is founded on the character of God to do what he promised. And, that, and, that, and listen, no different in your life. What's true for Mary is true for you. What's true for you is true for me and it's true for everybody else. This is how it works. You know that little song, Mary, Did You Know, that Christmas song? Mary, did you know? Listen, once she accepted the reality of the fulfillment of Isaiah's 700-year-old prophecy, she accepted her role in the plan of God. As behold, a bond slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your rima, your word. Once she accepted the directive will of God regarding virgin motherhood, she was ready to apply it so that God could complete it in her faith life. Mary, did you know? <laughs> 
boy, she really knew, didn't she? Gabriel came down and walked her through it. I might have that song sung, Joseph, did you know? Yeah, Matthew, the first chapter. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us, with us, God with us. Listen, that's the God side of it. Mary with God is the human side of it, the believer side of it. When that, those two come in line with faith, God does miraculous things in your life. I'm sure you have testimony for that today. The Bethlehem shepherds. Shepherds, did you know? We could sing this song to the shepherds. Luke, the second chapter, 11 and 12. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes lying in a manger. You see, all things are possible to those who believe according to the Rima, the categorical Bible doctrine stated as a directive will of God to your life. All things, all things are possible for nothing is impossible with God when it's given according to his word. I want you to be encouraged this year as you go into you leave 20 to go to 21. Would you be encouraged by this? It's a wonderful Christmas story with some of the most difficult things attached to it. Conflicts. Be confident that nothing is impossible with God. Let us pray. Our Father, we're thankful today for these that have come our way and been so attentive I pray Father that we would grab a hold of a promise like this nothing will be impossible with God but we got to be with God we've got to be with you Father we got to be students of your word so that when that word of God is revealed as the directive will of God we can grasp it and 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 maintain hold of it by our faith, no matter what our circumstances and the conflicts that arise from it. Because we know that nothing is impossible or all things are possible. We thank you for that promise in Jesus' name. Amen.